Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about our chickens crunching on the snow. We need to refill some feed. I got to go out and do water for the other chickens. We've got chickens in a couple of different areas, so I'll talk to you guys about that, why that is. Uh, I've gotten a bunch of questions. Should I raise chickens? What does it entail to raise chickens? So we're going to talk about that on this episode. Guys, y'all, this is what it is to raise chickens. Hang on, let me put this feed down. <sighs> okay. So, uh, um, let me show you something here. <laughs> Hang on, let me flip this around. Okay, I flipped it around. So we have a rooster. Hello, sir. Your tail feathers are coming in wonderfully. Oh, people are fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Y'all, do you see this? Do you see this? <laughs> Somebody has laid an egg <laughs> in the middle of the snow. Y'all, I can't make this stuff up. Oh, yep, it's still warm. It's, it's a little cool, but it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> Okay, let's go check inside the coop. That's the bag I was just carrying. Now, inside this coop, as you guys can see, tons of snow out here. Kitties too. <laughs> and then, start murder on this door. My chickens like to scratch out a lot of their bedding. Bedding, food, implements, like, the feeders, things like that. Uh, laying boxes. These are really old laying boxes that we inherited. But all of these things are things that you need to consider when you are looking into chickens. Oh, somebody's in there. Sorry. Okay, I'll leave you alone. It's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, dust bath. That's actually what this guy is right here. That is a dust bath. That is another something to consider. <laughs> Graceful, darling. Graceful. Um, I will refeed their food. And just so y'all know, this food is not from Tractor Supply. It's from our local um, mill that blends all kinds of food. We've actually, we bought a pallet of this back in September. Uh, I've got another little coop over here. And that's as far open as I can get the door, thanks to all of this lovely snow. But we're gonna open this up, take a peek inside. Anything? Nope, nothing. Uh, got some little pellets. I actually wear two pairs of gloves when it's really cold days. I do these uh, latex or neoprene gloves and then my big work gloves over the top of them so that if I need to take my my big gloves off, I'm able to do that. I actually need to clean out a bunch of this. So I'll just, it's, it's 20 degrees right now. So I'll just take some of this chicken poop and chuck it out here. <laughs> my, my roof is uh, letting down some beautiful, gigantic icicles. There we go. Okay, no eggs in here. Yesterday was a really, really cold day, so I didn't really expect to find eggs, especially didn't expect to find one on the sidewalk. Okay, I'll try to get my poor coop to close. It doesn't want to close. What is it, sir? What you, what you doing in the tree, buddy? Huh? You like the view from up there? Is it pretty good? Oh. 
Don't you do it. You better leave my camera alone, sir. R2. Don't do it. <laughs> R2, leave the camera alone. Come on, Maui. Everybody's happily munching. And then I threw some black oil sunflower seeds out here as well, next to the cat. <laughs> Everybody's cleaning up my mess over there. So this is one thing to help them if they're not laying super well. You can add black oil sunflower seeds. Cracked corn is also really good. But the biggest thing that you're gonna wanna do is actually up their protein. Let me go check in here and see if that lady's still laying her egg or not. still in there so we'll come back out and check on her in a little bit to see on her egg alrighty so there are different options to do for the bedding we have a combination of hemp bale leaves and straw in here right now I actually prefer to do the deep litter method and it works pretty well here for us because we don't get super, super soggy and super, oh, did you finish? She might've just laid an egg. We'll go check the egg. What is it, darling? Sometimes they, sometimes they get very particular about when they're going to lay their egg. And if they are annoyed, they can do that. So bedding is one of the things that you're going to need to consider when you're looking at getting chickens. Um, next year, I actually plan to collect a lot of the leaves that fall. This year we didn't. But I think we're going to collect a lot of the leaves this year. And we're going to use that in our deep bedding. Uh, the straw, the hemp, and the leaves together have made a fantastic combination. And what's fun is that the straw actually has seeds in it. And so the chickens have been able to go through and pick out some of the seeds that they have um, that are still in there. And so it's kind of a treat for them. And it gives them something to turn over. Um, but bedding is one of the expenses of having chickens. Also, the coop itself. That honestly is probably one of the most important things for you to consider when you are looking at getting chickens is are you going to need to build something or do you have something that could work? In California, we actually had one of those giant like Rubbermaid sheds and we used that as our coop. We put some plastic shelving in there. We kind of put up little dividers so that we created laying boxes on the sides. And then we took big giant branches, lashed them to the shelves on either side to create the roosts for the chickens to stay up in. Because chickens really do like to, a lot of them really like to be higher up. So we had that set up in California. It worked great. We had absolutely no issues. It had ventilation. It had some screen openings up in the top so that they would never get too stuffy in California. And we were able to close them in every single night to make sure that they were safe. Because a lot of the problem with keeping chickens is actually gonna be the predators. 
So you need to be able to secure them at night. Like this door shuts and I actually have a hard time closing or opening it in the morning because it has such a tight fit. We also have a little pass through uh, back over in here, which we can open up and it opens up into a little side yard if we want to keep the chickens contained, but still let them go out for a little bit for whatever reason. Uh, that's also in there. And then there is a big giant window in here and we can actually open this. It has a screen on the top and a screen down at the bottom and it lets a lot of fresh air through. So come springtime, I'm gonna check on this. The deep litter method, sometimes you can go for up to a year without having to really do anything with it, except for turning it over like once a week if the chickens aren't doing that, and then always adding more bedding on top of it. So generally you wanna clean it out about once a year if you're doing the deep litter method. If you are not doing that, then you're gonna need to clean it out every month or so. It really, really depends. How many chickens do you have? How much are they pooping? How much time are they spending in the coop? Because if they are not spending too much time in the coop, then they're not gonna poop as much. But fun fact, most of the pooping that chickens do is in their sleep. So when they are roosted in here for the night, down below here, you'll be able to see giant piles of poop. And then where some of the ladies uh, go up here and they go on top of this little door, They'll, there's tons of poop up here and down here. So I got to go out and I got to clean it. It's actually nice when it's frozen because then you just go out there and like scrape it off and it's a lot easier than when it's gooey. But uh, bedding, your coop, your food. Now, chicken feed didn't used to be a thing. We've only had that for so long. Chickens have been around a lot longer than commercial feed operations have existed. So I have a lot of people that ask me, can you feed chickens other things? And yes, you absolutely can. Over here, you might be able to see where the kitty is right now. Over here in this whole area is where I tend to drop a lot of scraps for my chickens. This morning, they got all of the bell pepper remnants, the seeds, the innards, the, the stems and everything that was left over from when I was processing some potatoes O'Brien. I put those all in the freezer, a lot of work, but they get the scraps. I also found some old, look at my lovely icicles, isn't that fun? I also found some old ground beef in the back of my fridge that had gotten buried behind a bunch of other stuff. So I pulled that out and I gave that to the chickens too. We discovered last year when I was processing venison, we would have leftover venison, we were throwing it outside for the dogs. The chickens would come through after the dogs did and they would just completely decimate and peel off all the meat from the bones that we were throwing out there. My chickens last year laid through the entire winter. They almost never took any kind of a break whatsoever. And now I understand it was actually the increase in protein that helped them to be able to lay all year round. So that was really eye-opening this year. We had a really nasty molt this year. Their protein level has been way lower. They haven't been getting the supplemental stuff from the leftover venison. So that made a huge difference for us. We definitely noticed a difference. So any scraps that you can give your chickens can help immensely. Come spring, summer, and fall, I almost never feed my chickens because my chickens have 26 acres on which they can forage and they're gonna find bugs and plants and then I will continue to give them scraps and things like that. So we don't really need to feed them much throughout the year. I will give them calcium supplements. I actually refeed them their shells. We have oyster shells. I will keep the black oil sunflower seeds and like cracked corn and things like that on hand for more in the winter months. Cause I mean, frankly, we do have quite a few winter months here in Wisconsin so that I can help give them a boost of nutrition and energy. The corn especially can help kind of boost their metabolism. They can keep themselves a little bit warmer. So that really is helpful in the winter time months. Now I'm going to come in here, I'm gonna grab the hose and we are going to go out and do chores in the other pen. And then I'll explain why I have two chicken pens uh, and what the deal is with that. Okay, 
Now I have grabbed my hose. This is just a length of hose that's been cut off that we use. We have a frost free well pump out here and that is only going to work as long as I have power. But while I have power, <laughs> I am going to use it. But the hose freezes if we leave it outside. It's been in the negatives at night. So I've been taking it inside and sticking it kind of out of the way where it can thaw out uh, and not get frozen. So I have to grab it before I go do chores. Now, why do I have two areas? The geese are gonna start screaming here <laughs> in any second. We have two areas because we are actually working on moving all of our birds back behind the fencing on our property. Last year, we had so many predators come through that took half of my flock that was out here. They would come in the middle of the day. Sorry. Hello, geese. Good morning. Ooh. Hello. Good morning. Yes. Oh, Abs is coming to do. Honey girl, you're coming to do chores with me? Okay, let's go do chores. We had predators coming through in the middle of the day, whether it was birds of prey or if it was coyotes or foxes or weasels or raccoons or possums were all coming through and they were clearing out my flock. So we are going to move them back here behind the fence where they're going to be able to view with the geese and with the ducks and with the emus because a lot of those predators don't try that kind of stuff when they are back here with the bigger birds. Flip your on so you can see my emus. Hello, good morning. Oh, Abs, you are so helpful, darling. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good morning. Oh, you're doing good on water, okay. Yeah, let's check. Oh, we inherited a bunch of this stuff and I use it to secure my fences so that nothing can push back through here. Hello everybody. Oh, we're all out of food, just about out of water. Okay, give me a minute to come on in there and I'll cool, I'll, I'll get to I'll get to going. These are heated buckets and we are able to plug them in and keep the water from freezing. Even in the negative temperatures, you can see it's still liquid. And here is our frost-free uh, well pump right there. So water in the winter is fun. Those ones in there, I actually don't always give them water because they have the ability to walk down to the creek and they can go drink out of it. I will give them water on the really cold days. When I get back inside, I'll probably set out a little bowl of water. But for the most part, they actually don't drink too much of it. And these guys out here have these buckets, but I have discovered a way to be able to make it work for us if there is no power out here. And that is actually bringing out a five gallon bucket of very warm water. And then I will pour that into the bowls and it takes a while. Indeed. You guys gonna help me talk about all of this? Yeah? No? Nothing? Okay. Thank you for your input. It's very helpful. But doing the water is very doable in the winter time. Yeah, it kind of stinks because usually you have to do it a little bit earlier in the morning and then come out in the afternoon and check on it again to see if they need any more or if it's completely frozen. Um, my birds eat the snow. I've heard a million times that that's bad for them, that they shouldn't do that, but try telling it to my birds that they shouldn't be eating the snow because sometimes I'll bring them bowls of water and they still just eat the snow. You can only do whatever it is that you can do. So I'm going to come in here and get them some more food. They still have some food in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and top it off for them and clear out their water dish and then fill it up. So 
here is a lot of the storage. This is a shed that we have out here. You can see we've been working on building them this little coop area to keep them secure. I just need to take the fencing all the way up and connect it up here so that we can keep them from flying over, which doesn't happen too very often. But here we are. Hello, everybody. Now, these guys spend a lot more time here in the coop, and so you can see how much more buildup there is than in the other coop. There's a lot less buildup in the other coop. So this one also houses the ducks and the geese. They come in here and they sleep. So here's our little chicken area. You can see all that chicken manure is going to be fantastic for my garden. Um, we, we're gonna use it in a compost. And then there's the duck and the geese manure. So I have to add a lot more straw or bedding in here a lot more often because there are more birds in here and they spend a lot more time in here, but the, the pooping at night is the biggest thing, which honestly is nice because they, they do a lot of it over here. And they sit there and they protect my chickens because the geese and the ducks are in here and the geese do not put up with anything. So they're like my guard geese. They are fantastic. But I'm uh, we're going to build some laying boxes over here. We just haven't gotten to it yet because it got so cold. So we are going to start working on that and hopefully eventually show you guys what that looks like. But I have their food in these giant vittles. These ones hold 80 pounds and it keeps predators out. Oh, you see that one needs to be refilled. I got to bring some more of the feed bags out here. This is what we put their food in because the, you can actually see that one's been ripped open, but the critters will come in here and they will chew through all these bags. They don't seem to mess with the rabbit pellets as much. Those ones are more for the emus um, and the geese do eat it a little bit, but I'll measure out about five of these dog food bowls a day and take it over and dump it in their in their feeder so that they they're kind of free fed but as i said again so these ones are going to have about an acre of land to be able to forage over for bugs and grass and even mice come spring summer and fall when everything starts growing but for right now in the winter we do have to Kind of give them some feed. I'm gonna give them a little bit extra because it's been so cold. So I'm gonna put that back on. Get this scooted on out of the way and get on in there to feed everybody. How's it going in here? How's everybody doing? Huh? Hello, beautiful. Look at your color, sweetheart. You are so pretty. And you, sir, so handsome. So handsome. Okay, guys, I'm coming, I'm coming. Coming through. Coming through. Here we go. There we go. Now they've got their food and I am going to take their water bowl. I filled this up yesterday with hot water. They were able to get through about half of it. What I do is I take their water bowl and then I will very, very, <laughs> very, very carefully bring it over here to the water bowl graveyard and I will flip it upside down and stomp on it very carefully all the way around until it breaks loose. There we go, you heard it go. So, now I've got a nice clear water bowl. You gotta be super careful because this plastic cracks really easily in these really cold temps. And these will just sit here until they thaw. Come springtime when it starts raining and 
I got a bucket that got buried there. I got two more buckets that got buried over there. I got that one that I couldn't get up to empty out. So this is a big giant mess of droppings. So we are gonna have to deal with this as well when everything starts to thaw, but I mean, everything is just frozen so solid here. Um, oh, there's teeny tiny little rabbit droppings right over there. The rabbits have been coming in probably to eat some of the grain. I also have these kennels out here that have straw in them to encourage them to try to lay their eggs in there. That's actually a fake egg in there. That one's not a real one. These ones have not started laying yet. They're a little bit young. So we hatched these ones in the late fall and they have never laid an egg yet. But I'm providing them with areas that they can come in, they can get cozy, they can lay an egg, hopefully. <laughs> Indeed, I gotta come check on your food and water too. Yes. It's open over here so that the chickens can go out and then the geese and ducks can come in, but the emus cannot because they like to be naughty. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. So this is just, it's just solid. It is completely solid. So this is the stuff that we're gonna get to clean out come springtime. It's gonna be so much fun. So much fun. Hello everyone. Am I out here doing chores? You guys are all so fluffy. Look at how fluffy you are. Hello loves. Yeah. Okay, back to chores. So as you can see, I take the hose and I feed it through so that I can fill up their tub. And then I take it, redirect over here. And now I can close. Hello, love. Yes, hello. Abby is always my helper when it's chore time. Always. Always. Yes, always. Sweet girl. I know, beautiful. With the one little white paw. The one little white toe. Just one little toe. 
Oh, you're so toasty. Yes, you are. Oh, my goodness. My helper. You're such a good helper. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Come on, Abs. Let's go. Come on. You coming? Come on, baby. <laughs> oh, my phone is covered in dust. So much dust. So that is some of the things to consider when you're looking at getting chickens is having everything for them. I actually don't usually provide my chickens with grit because we have such sandy soil here. Um, I have provided them with it before. They haven't really ever eaten it, but everywhere is different and everyone needs different things. Come on, Abs. Good job. So there's a lot to learning about it, but I think that it is 100% worth it if you have the ability and the finances to do it because you never know when you're gonna come out and you're gonna find a nice little present laying on the snow for you. The other thing to consider about keeping chickens is that there is going to be a time where you are going to potentially have to kill one. They do get sick and sometimes the best thing for them is going to be to call them. So that is yet another thing for you to consider. Are you willing and able to do that should the need arise? If one of them gets injured and they are not able to be healed, would you be able to handle that? If not, consider finding someone else who could maybe process your chickens for you um, or look at rehoming it, understanding that, yeah, somebody is probably going to um, kill the chicken and not try to rehab it. Let's go check the coop one more time. See if anybody's left me any presents. I'm gonna have to wait a minute for my eyes to adjust. Oh, nope, somebody's in that box now. People are still in the boxes. So we'll come back out later. Excuse me, sir. Anyways, I hope that answers some of your guys' questions about what to do, if it would even be worth it to have chickens, what all does it entail to have chickens. Um, a lot of this stuff, frankly, we learned as we went. We had no idea what we were doing and we would make the best laid plans. It looked great on paper. And then when it came to the actual application of things, we had to make some changes. So, that is our personal experience. I love my chickens. I think that they are beautiful. They are fun. They can be super useful for things like fertilizer and cleaning up scraps. We almost never throw away any food anymore. It either goes to my dogs or goes to my chickens. And it's helped immensely with um, the with lessening the waste of food products, including meat scrapings and things like that. So anyways, I hope that you guys found this informative. If you have any more questions about chickens and anything that I may have left out, leave it down below for me in a comment and I will get to that and maybe even make another video on it. And there's another cat. So thanks so much guys for checking in today. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys on the way. And then sometimes, you end up with an animal that is injured and you're like, okay, I probably need to call it. And then your spouse says, oh, maybe we should bring it inside and see if we can rehab it. And then this happens. Hi, Teeter. That would be the duck's kennel. But this has its own perks. <laughs> Cold. So cold. So cold. So cold. I should probably grab a hat, but that would make too much sense. Why would I do that? Come on, let's get your little feet in because you're annoying. There we go. That's a little bit better. 
Oh, and you're still recording, so there we go. Okay, now I have very do it. Try that again. Who are you? What is it, Alex? 